The news today in the Young Thug YSL trial is that Judge Whittaker has rejected Brian Steele's motion to disqualify DA's Love and Hilton. Steele had said he needed to call them as witnesses because of the June 10th meeting that they had in chambers with Judge Glanville and Kenneth Woody Copeland. He wants to ask DA Love about coercive measures he thinks that she's taken with witnesses such as Woody and then a woman who testified a while back, A. Bennett. But here in the order, Judge Whitaker says she just doesn't think it's necessary, that he has the transcript from the ex parte and he's going to be able to cross-examine Woody about that. And that should be enough to get what he, he needs. So she sees no reason to disqualify Love or Hilton from the case. And then below this is a proposed jury instruction that Steele has filed regarding Judge Glanville's departure and uh, comments that Judge Glanville has made about him. In particular, Judge Glanville said in front of the jury a while back that he was unprepared and unprofessional. So he wants the Judge Whittaker to read to the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Ural Glanville is no longer the judge presiding over this case for which you have been selected and sworn to try. Judge Glanville was removed as the presiding judge in this case. You are not to concern yourself with this change. In a trial, none of the decisions of the court and nothing that any judge says is evidence. The decisions and remarks of a judge do not mean that the judge favors or le leans to one side or another in this case. You are to disregard any comments made by Judge Glanville that were disparaging of the defense lawyers in this case. To maintain the integrity of the jury system, I remind you that you must decide the case based only on the evidence admitted during the trial and the law I will explain to you. So I, I doubt the judge is going to adopt that exact language, but there's going to be something like that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that middle paragraph sticks as is, but... Um, I also wouldn't be surprised if she wants to say disparaging of the lawyers in this case instead of just specifying defense lawyers. But we'll see. They're, they're, they're going to have to read something. They're going to have to have something to explain uh, this. I mean, not not getting into the, all the details of Glanville's departure, but there's going to be something. And then also they have to come up with something they're going to read to the jury about rewinding Woody's testimony. Like, how are they supposed to disregard this testimony? Are they supposed to destroy their notes? That kind of thing. So. That's what we're up against when the trial is back or case is back for a hearing tomorrow. It's 8.45 a.m. in Atlanta, which is 5.45 a.m. here in Los Angeles. I've been kind of adjusting my, my sleep schedule for, for that. So um, can someone answer about hostile witness? Uh, you know, if if the prosecutors were to declare, at least in my experience, a hostile witness means that you can ask leading questions when like on direct exam when you normally wouldn't be able to. But I don't think they've gotten that with that designation with with Woody. So I don't know if we're going to we're going to see that. But um, anyway, see the comments here. Somebody says, uh, you know, the ASAP case is just so much different than Young Thug. I mean, it, it, it's a lot like the, the Tory Lanez case and that he's charged with the same thing. The, the facts are totally different, but the Young Thug case is so different. And that it's such a huge case with this racketeering conspiracy charge. It's just, it's weird. But, um, but yeah, so I think that's, uh, that's what, we're all, what we're all looking for is uh, Woody's testimony returning. And then also, I, you know, how fast are they going to get through Woody and, and what are they going to do after that? But yeah, somebody says, uh, love the friendship in the chats, Jenny D. And I, I was kind of noticing that earlier. I was like, oh, there's people like recognizing each other there and like saying hi and stuff. That's cool. That's cool. Um, oh, Ashley asked, where is the immediate review? They rejected that. Um, Steel filed for it, but it got immediately rejected. So um, and the idea if it wasn't rejected, they're just the, the appellate court wouldn't really see any legal. I think they'd have to side with with Judge Whittaker on that. But uh, still outstanding is the mistrial motion. So we'll look for a ruling on that. But um, yeah, it is a cool chat. That's cool. I like people. Uh, I like people going. I'm, I'm kind of like reluctant to sign off. I'm like, I hate to like ruin this for for people. But I'm frankly just kind of running out of things to say. And I don't want to just just go on forever. But uh, I have not seen any other other significant rulings. But I'm looking forward to the ruling on the mistrial, just reading what, uh, what 
what her um, what her take is on on the ex parties and everything. And I'll I'll definitely do a a ruling on that. So. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. But yeah, you guys are great. Thanks for tuning in. Give me a like, say hi. Um, yeah, somebody says, don't worry, you leave. We can keep it going. I'm like, yeah, just keep it live. You guys just keep, uh, there's got, there, there has to be some way to get the chat displayed on the screen, right? There's so much like, more I can do with with YouTube. I got a, I got an invite from YouTube creator program for some kind of like manager program for my shorts. Cause I've been posting all my TikTok clips recently as shorts and a lot of them have really done well. So apparently I hit some kind of algorithm and they reached out to me to, I don't know what that means to have like a short clip manager or something, but hopefully it, you know, kind of helps my, my standing on here. So yeah, let's get the, get the likes up. Right. Uh, right. Uh, YouTube. Oh, one thing I've got to do. And I'm like, God, fuck. And it's just a different crowd. Like one thing I've noticed, and, and maybe it's just because the Young Thug case is just so much more legally complicated, but also, and I'm sure this isn't even close to a controversial statement. And here it is. Somebody just mentioned Tory Lanez. Like Young Thug is such a m much more famous and accomplished rapper than Tory Lanez. Like, right. That's like, that's not even a controversial thing for me to say, but I've just noticed that the crowd that watches the trial is a lot different than the Tory Lanez case and somebody says god i never said tory lane's uh appeal was rejected a bunch of people have been reporting that because i think they are confused and they think that the state attorney general's office is like the decider of it but here i'll i'll send you guys my article and this is it i don't get this with the young thug crowd but the stupidity in these tory lane's watchers it's like they don't even read what i write it's freaking crazy but that's my Tory Lane story. I think if anybody reads, reads it, they'll see I say up high that the Second District Court of Appeal has not decided this appeal yet. You know, so but it's just a, it was a story on a new filing in his appeal. There's actually another filing that I have that's 140 pages long that I need to read through and and write about. But like I said, I after covering Young Thug for so long and then going back to the Tory Lane's case, I'm like, wow, there is such a marked difference between the people who pay attention to these two cases, like. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. But, uh, anyway, uh, somebody says what's going on with Melly. You know, I didn't, I meant to clip that out too, but Bryson, boom, Paul, who did the, the my googly eyed bitch logo, which man, I missed an opportunity on that. I saw somebody in the chat earlier ask how they can buy a googly eyed bitch mug. And I entered the, uh, my, my URL for Megan, the reporter, but I've got it. I've got it right here. I need, I still need to get it set up. So it's actually attached on my YouTube, but uh, Bryson who did the googly eyed bitch logo is all, also covers the Melly trial. So I had him on a live a while back, just kind of doing an update on the case. And there's really nothing going on with that. They'd set a trial date for late 2025 and um, uh, uh, but there's an appeal that is, still going on that gosh i'll have to sometime when there's something new i'll get bryson on to get, give an update because i, I kind of want to do that try to get like a virtual newsroom going on because there's frankly just so many cases going on it's way more than one person to, to cover and uh bryson has been following the melly trial for a while he he followed the first trial so i want to kind of give help give him a platform and stuff to to talk about that but the trial scheduled in late 2025 and right now there's an appeal going on so um so anyway, uh, see the little guy going off about lanes, stop warming. I mean, it's just, it's that constantly with them. It, it's kind of gotten me off. Uh, oh God, now he's spamming it. That's why you keep lying about Tori. Dude, I don't give a shit about Tori. Oh my God. Um, all this, I mean, it's just, it's crazy the vitriol around that case. It's like, let's just, yeah. Like I said, the Young Thug case is much more interesting, but uh, do you think the feds will pick up this case if the state loses? Definitely not. Like, I, I don't think the feds would ever touch this case. I mean, may, maybe they'll, maybe this will spur the feds to look into some of the injustices going on at the, the Fulton County jail and that kind of thing. But definitely they're not going to look at this case and be like, oh, this is a really good Rico case. We should go after these guys. Like, no way. It's like most of their evidence is like a bunch of stuff they posted on 
Instagram when they were like 17, you know, but that's why I'm looking forward to this Mexican mafia Rico case coming up in LA federal court. Cause it's a fucking real Rico case. You know, it's not going to be six years long. It's going to be like a, maybe a month long trial, maybe longer. They actually have four defendants on trial, but um, like the Mexican mafia running drugs in the LA County jail, like that's the kind of topic that you think the feds would like go after for Rico. And they, and they did, the case was actually filed in 2018. So it's, it's been going on for, actually it has been going on for six years, but the trial is not going to be six years long. So um, God, geez, this TV, it's just freaking, and, and sometimes I think blocking these people is just way more attention than they even deserve, but yeah, God, get them out of here. Anyway. Um, what about the silencers and machine guns? They could. I mean, a lot of these guys have been prosecuted for guns and stuff in court, right? I mean, Young Thug never has, has he? Th this is this is when Thugger Daily comes in very handy because he he knows like all the other cases and stuff that they've been involved in. But I, I definitely wouldn't expect to see any kind of federal RICO case. Like, if the feds wanted a RICO case, they would have. You know, they could charge it. They would they would like try to take over from the state. And then, and then also, I think there, <clears throat> excuse me, would be a double jeopardy argument attached to that. Anyway, I'll be right back here.